Welcome back to my channel where we help you go from having nothing to wear to always having something to wear and feeling more stylish. In today's episode, it's a little bit of a different episode to my other ones where I give you tips on building your capsule wardrobe. But I thought it was time to give a little bit of context about who on earth I am and why, you know, where this all came from and where did this lady get her information from about fashion. A bit of a background story on my journey with style and fashion and taking my wardrobe from having nothing to wear to now having an abundance of outfits. Apart from the fact that I work in fashion, there we go. <laughs> but it wasn't always this way and even before I worked in fashion, I did get to a place where, wow, my wardrobe really transformed and that honestly inspired my entire TikTok channel. It inspired my career path. Honestly, I didn't even know that I, this was where I was gonna end up making YouTube videos, TikToks and Instagram <laughs> about fashion. I'm Christine, if you're new to my channel and let's just take it all the way back to where it all began in 1903. Just kidding. Started off when I was a child. I don't know, I'm attracted to beautiful things. Being attracted to beautiful things doesn't always necessarily mean that you know how to execute on creating beautiful things, AKA beautiful outfits, beautiful home design, beautiful anything. You could be an admirer or you could be a creator. In the meantime, I've always been creative. So things like colors, shapes, textures always stand out to me. I just I never really thought to reverse engineer anything and I don't know whether I really had the knowledge or the practice to not reverse engineer but engineer anything. <laughs> and have a method to it. But in my lifetime, I've had lots of different jobs. I'm 38 years old. The one that I held for the longest and the, probably one of the most impactful ones before I started my business was when I was a flight attendant. Cause that meant that I wore a uniform and I didn't need to think about what I would wear to work. That's not to say that I didn't think about any of my outfits at all. Cause what that left me with was this lifestyle job where I would dress for every city that I went to. And this was before Instagram was famous. So I had this idea in my mind that I would dress to match wherever I go. So if I was going to Venice in Italy, I wanted to dress like I was in Venice. I wanted to look not necessarily Venetian, but I wanted to look like I'm in Venice. I'm traveling in Venice, but at the same time needed my shoes to be comfortable. Most of the time back then I suffered for beauty. I suffered for, for looks, for looks. So I often wear these block heel boots, which technically would be comfortable on cobblestone, unless you're a tourist and your actual purpose is to see and go to many places by foot. And so I had this <laughs> definition of what style was. I also had lots of different things in my wardrobe that I would buy from different cities, which is buy what I thought was nice and then create a look out of a mishmash of things that I had. Literally, my experience was dressing for a travel because that was the lifestyle that I had. And the only other part of that lifestyle that was repetitive was the nightlife. <laughs> Oh, the life of a flight attendant. So it was like going to hotels, going to brunches, going to nightclubs and bars, and then going to like, I don't know, Morocco and going to the markets of Morocco or Tanzania, or you know, I'm just thinking of these exotic places that I never thought I would ever visit and actually got to visit thanks to that job. After that, I thought I was gonna climb the corporate ladder. Didn't happen because for 12 months, I was consistently rejected from any job that I wanted. And that was pretty tough because I thought that when I quit my aviation career, I was then on this straight line upwards trajectory to climb the corporate ladder. Turns out my degree had had this kind of like expired effect. It had expired. Either that or I sucked at building resumes and cover letters. <laughs> I had lots of odd jobs. I did lots of temp jobs in admin. I started a small business and I was selling gold tattoos at the market. Man, I tell you, I've done it all. My gosh, I took a door to door knocking job because I was looking for jobs at the time. And honestly, back then, <laughs> I'm talking like it was ancient, but it wasn't that long ago where you find jobs either in the papers or on these particular like HR websites. I was just looking for any way into the marketing space because my degree wasn't doing it. So I was like, I'm gonna do anything. Each job had its own dress code. I found that my wardrobe looked like that. It looked like every job that I'd ever had. Any job that was corporate, that part of my wardrobe looked deep corporate. You could expect slim fitting, button down shirts, tailored pants, some pumps. That's that section. After that, I started my own business. I actually had done photography in Dubai. Yes. Yeah, so when I was a flight attendant, I used to work for Emirates and I lived in Dubai and that's when I picked up photography. Imagine this wardrobe for like any job in the corporate sector. And then all of a sudden you're like going to weddings, engagement parties. And like I was on commercial sets, maybe creating my own commercial sets, seeing clients in their businesses. So what does that wardrobe look like? 
like what am I dressing for and then family events what are we wearing to go to the park for a three-year-old birthday party you know, I was just like, I want to look nice, but I just, what, what are we wearing? Because I've got nightclub clothes, I've got corporate clothes, I've got, that's my dog, I should let him in. I've got, I should let him in, hang on. That's currently me, and he's bucket full of energy. Anyway, I, oh my gosh, now we're going to keep hearing his on the floor. I hope you're all right with that, because he slept all day, so he's not going to go in his bed anymore. <laughs> So that was that, and on top of that, I started a YouTube channel. I was always thinking, what should I wear on top to match my background and to not distract from my background? These were the kinds of thoughts that I would have as someone who just needs to put an outfit together for the day or for the task or for where I'm going. And it was always like, what? Then, later down the track, after a couple of businesses created, I was like, you know what? No, you, we can't do this. We can't do this tic-tac-tac. A couple of businesses later, a couple being more than a handful, lots of different paths and lots of different networking opportunities and conferences and photo shoots and YouTube videos. I find myself working part-time in fashion. That was partially because as a photographer, I ended up doing lots of personal branding photo shoots and people would always ask me what they should wear. And I found that there was this pattern that I would tell them to wear this, that, these are the guidelines. If they want to use these photos for a long time, if this is what their background's gonna be, this is a good cut. And I remember even taking a client where I did a full styling session with her. So I went to her house and we went through her whole wardrobe and then actually ended up doing a little bit of a wardrobe audit slash edit. The photography role ended up becoming that for that particular client and I really loved it. During a time where I was deciding whether photography was really going to be my thing, I had this like urge and I was like, I really want to learn about fashion, but I had invested so much already in... Emoji. Sorry, I, we're just going to... He's in his twilight years and I'm going to let him do this. Is it loud? We'll keep this one short and sweet. <laughs> this is how we're gonna do this video now. I thought I've already invested in so many business courses and so much personal development. I don't know whether I'm willing to go to school to learn fashion. And my partner was like, get a job in fashion. So I did. For two and a half years, I worked in fashion and that's where I learned so much. I, I actually became not just interested in styling people, but I got interested in understanding the business of fashion. The business of fashion is a really interesting one because you know, in my past videos, I talk about how fashion moves, there's a cycle to it, the abundance mentality around it. It's a real thing. That's for a whole other video, but it got me to see the multiple sides of the fashion industry from the desires of the people who wear the fashion, such as us, you know, the mindset that we have, the desires that we have, the things that we feel we will get by wearing a certain brand, by associating ourselves with a certain brand, Brand, the fit of a certain garment when it fits really well, the feeling when it, it's just a bad shopping day and you're not winning at all. It's actually quite a holistic experience. And I also learned about the business of fashion. From there, I started to notice more and more patterns on, you know, things I'd recommend regularly. I've talked about how, you know, you look at certain pieces as so mundane, like a white tank top. Mundane, boring. Why am I out to buy a white tank top? It's so blah. But I found that that was the beginning where I was like, hang on, I tend to not have outfits because I have so many different bottoms, different styles of bottoms and so many different styles of tops. I can't pair them together. I need something that is so plain and basic. And that was it. I remember buying a tank top from Zara and I was like, this is nice. And it became my go-to top. I didn't know anything about capsule wardrobe back then. I just knew that this one white top, if I didn't want to think about anything, I'll wear it. And then I bought a black version of the same thing. So if you feel like you like one cut and then you buy a few co colors, I literally think that that's a strategy because it's not every day that you find something that will just fit amazingly. And so that began the idea or the realization. The realization that a lot of the things that I thought were a bit too boring and they weren't that nice were become, becoming like the backbone of my wardrobe. That's that. The rest is history. I started leaning into things that were boring and buy them in different fabrics. You buy a knit tank top that's white and I'm like, oh, that's great. Get it as a cotton, get it as linen. Now it looks like I've got like 10 white tank tops, but when it comes to creating a cohesive look, you know, for the summer, I whip out the linen version. If it comes to creating a cohesive look in the winter or a trans seasonal, I whip out the knit, the wool version. And I started to go, holy 
Majoli. Are we just copy pasting what we've done for the summer for the winter, except adding sleeves and changing the fabric? Why have I always thought that fashion was so complicated when literally that's exactly what's happening? The blazer for summer, the linen blazer, is now becoming a wool blazer. Ew. I felt like I had discovered this major, like the holy grail, like this major secret that every fashion person was in on that I had just understood. Today years old when I discovered that tensile pants for the summer and wool pants for the winter could be exactly the same shape, it's just they're a different fabric and therefore one is warmer and one is light. My world shifted. I probably look like I'm exaggerating, but honestly, that's how, how much it impacted me. And then that inspired the series on my TikTok, which is like, oh, I went from having nothing to wear because it literally was the thing that changed my entire situation. And so from there, my wardrobe went from hardly segmented, I can't wear this for that occasion, that occasion, can't wear the clothes for that occasion and that environment for that occasion. And it started becoming like the circular thing where I'm like, I can take this white tank top into here into here, into here, and then now I have it in a different fabric. I can take it here, 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 here. One piece of clothing would go so much further. A lot of the time I'll say, now that I know this, <laughs> I'm like, well, fashion is actually like really quite simple. Where it can feel complicated is, you know, if you like the spice of life, variety, which that's me. I don't know whether that's a personality type. It should be. It's just, it's my style. You know, everyone's got their way. Some people are minimalist. Some people are maximalist. I'm neither here nor there, but I do know that out of all of my neutral colored clothes, black, white, beige, every now and then I want to wear electric blue. If I want to wear electric blue, what am I going to wear that with? And I just apply the same formula for every single bloody outfit that I create. <laughs> Actually, I do have a masterclass. It's called the five stages to your complete personalized wardrobe because that's what it is. If fashion, like dressing, not fashion. I think fashion is subjective and it's all about creative and you know, function meets creative. But I think dressing, the actual act of dressing, like the verb, is it a verb? Like the verb of dressing? If dressing was taught in schools from when you're a child because dressing is part of everyday life, dressing being part of everyday life, like brushing your teeth, then it would be taught in this in the sequence. It's like one, two, three, four, five. And if you do it in the sequence, you will never not have anything to wear. That's what inspired that masterclass. Long story short, I had all of these life experiences of like hit and miss, hit and miss, constant hit and miss, until it was like, ding, the white tank top, ding, the white button down shirt. And I was like, oh my God. All this time I thought it was E equals MC squared and I was never, you know, I didn't think I was never going to get there, but I just thought it was just going to be like so much more complicated than what it truly is. That's my story on how I literally went from having nothing to wear and having lots of clothes to always having something to wear, still having lots of clothes. <laughs> That's an occupational hazard. I do work in fashion and for me to understand how fashion works, I need to be in it, need to get gritty, got to touch, look, touch, feel, fit, touch, taste, touch, taste. Licking the fabric. You gotta be in it because fashion does move. So just staying relevant, you know, understanding how fashion moves. And even in the cycles of fashion, you, you realize, oh, oh, everything is repetition. Once you know your personal style, you will find it so much easier to put outfits together and to build your wardrobe as a, as a whole, not just as many nice pieces in one space. It's like, you look at it as a whole. So I invite you to check out the five stages to completing your what? Honestly, I'm gonna call this the capsule wardrobe method. That's that. That's, as of this video, that masterclass is now called the capsule wardrobe method. Five steps. Oh, Christine. Pat on the back, it only took six months. And that's it. So that's partially my life story and partially my fashion journey. And now I do what I love. I, I fa almost swore there. I really love what I do. And it's not just because, you know, it's nice to look nice, but your external directly impacts your internal and your internal has a direct impact on your external. Wherever your growth journey begins, whether it's you wore a blazer that was out of your comfort zone and it had a direct impact on your confidence, or you grew so much internally that your external environment and your wardrobe couldn't help but align itself to you. It is quite a holistic experience. We're going to get a bit woo here, but through those practices of alignment, mindfulness, understanding balance, understanding what I want and what I need. And I encourage you to do the same as like, look at what you want, look at what you need, not just from a today perspective, but as a whole, your life experience. What, Where did, did we just go into personal development conversation? Sorry, not sorry. You know, they say one of the, 
he wants to get out now. One of the personal development courses that I did, this saying really stuck with me, how you do one thing is how you do everything. I learned that from Landmark and how you see your wardrobe and how you build your wardrobe, how you build your style is some kind of echo to how you do other things in life. And I thought that was both mind boggling and enlightening. I would love to know actually, true, true, true question. Would you like more videos like this? Bit of a chat, get to know each other kind of vibe. I, I will not be offended if you say no, although it might not necessarily stop me from making more videos like this. But I, like I said, I love what I do and I love educating about fashion, but I also love a bit of a chat. So I'm keen to know what you lean towards in the comment section below. And if you like this video, give it a like. It always helps. If you're new to the channel, like I said, subscribe there's more where this came from and more videos from the past if you are new here and you want to binge fashion content with a bit of someone who's a little bit loose <laughs> all right i'll see you in the next episode bye